So Allah says, وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُسْرُحَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَذَا الْمُكْفَارِ He said, if you were to count the blessings of Allah, you'll never be able to count. Indeed, mankind is most ungrateful to themselves. If you were to count, can you, can you quantify the blessings that Allah has given you? Can you quantify? You cannot. That's it. If, for example, if I'm really thirsty and you give me your bottle of water to me, if I was to think, are you married? You're married. Yeah, yeah. If I was to thank your wife, does that show I'm being grateful to you? I'm being ungrateful to you. I'm giving all the favor. I'm giving all the credit to her, but you're the one that gave me the bottle of water, so I should thank you, right? So what you find is many religions, indirectly or directly, instead of thanking the Creator Allah exclusively, they share their worship to the creation, and that doesn't show gratitude because, from our human nature, whoever does favor to us, we should say thanks. So why aren't we being grateful to the one who gave all sustenance? We're enjoying our life. That is the message of all the prophets and messengers. To worship Allah alone, do not worship His creation. That's it. It's very simple. That's the reason why, based on God's wisdom, He sends prophets and messengers. And these prophets and messengers, they have two functions. The first function is to remind people to worship only Allah alone. He is perfect in all of His attributes. Yeah, No deficiency, no weakness. And the second function is they were our role models to show us how to worship Allah, how to show greatness. Yeah. So if I was to give you an example, and thank you for taking your time, I really appreciate it. Um, if you want to buy a gift for your wife, yeah, and she's here, she can testify it. Would you buy a gift based upon what she loves or based upon what you love? What she loves, why? Yeah. Because you want to please her, right? You want to please her. Yeah, because that's objective love. So therefore, we should worship Allah the way how He wants, not the way how we want. Because that, sh that is true love. That is true gratitude, yeah? So now God sends prophets and messengers, and these prophets and messengers were given divine revelation. And they taught us how to worship Allah. Yeah? They, so we have to follow the way of the prophets. So we believe that Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sends many prophets and messengers in every age. As Allah says in the Quran in, in Surah Tara, Surah 13, Ayah 7, وَلِكُلِ قَوْمٍ مِنْ To every nation have we sent a guide. Yeah? So there are some prophets and messengers that are not mentioned in the Quran, and there are some messengers that are mentioned. But we affirm that in every age, in every nation, like even in India, perhaps in China, Allah sent the prophet messenger, you know, worship Allah alone, follow my teachings. When you follow my teaching, you're showing grateful to God, right? But all the previous prophets, they were sent for their people for their time. But the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, see he is the last and final prophet, no prophet will come after him. And therefore he was given the perfect legislation. So therefore the message is relevant to you. Because all other religions, they were named after a geographical location, maybe, you know, for example, Hinduism comes from the word Hindi. In fact, Hindi is a, uh, it was used by the British. But Indians are those who live in the Indus Valley. Yeah, so anyone who lives in India's valley is a Hindu, right? So the message was only for that particular nation. If you look at the Moses, peace be upon him, the message was only for the Israelites, yeah? Like in terms of legislation. But all the prophet's messengers, they all said to worship God alone. Don't worship the creation. But in different times, in different nations, based upon circumstances, they were given different legislations. So we say Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final prophet. No prophet will come after him. And we say that, first of all, he came with the greatest miracle, which is the Quran. The Quran is a book that no other, no one has produced a book like it, and the Quran gives a challenge. The Quran gives a challenge. You don't believe this is from God, this is from Allah. Try and produce a single chapter like it in the Arabic language. And the Arabs, for thousands of years, even till now, they cannot meet the challenge. Even WhatsApp GPT, you know, even artificial intelligence, they say we cannot imitate the Quran. Yeah, because we believe that every prophet was given a miracle to, sh to, to, to validate their prophethood. Because so many people can lie, right? For ulterior motives, etc. But the Prophet Muhammad Peace was given the greatest miracle because the Quran is preserved. Millions of people have memorized the Quran. And even Allah guarantees the preservation. Allah mentions in chapter 15, verse 9, That indeed, it is upon, uh, indeed we have sent down the Quran, the reminder, and it is upon us to preserve. The Quran is the only religious scripture on the face of the earth that is preserved. And if you were to burn all the copies of the religious scriptures, the Bible, the Hindu scriptures, the Quran, the only book 
that will come to his original form is the Quran because it's memorized. And we don't need the scholars to do that to do the job. Six year old kids can do it for us. Because they will be memorized. memorized it contains yeah? more than six thousand verses. Six thousand verses. Yeah. People who don't even speak yeah. their language, that is not yeah. their native language, yeah. at the age of six, yeah. they can memorize the whole chapter to the point of like if you ask a child randomly a verse, just tell me from this verse, exactly. that person can remember from the heart Absolutely. that itself a miracle. Like can you can you memorize a book from top to bottom, six thousand words, more than six thousand words, and 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 at the age of six or seven, yeah. you'll see if you go to a mosque during Ramadan, or just pass by. We see that there, you know, there is someone who is reciting the Quran, and there is no book in front of them, yeah. and they are reciting for their memory, yeah. and they are reciting fluently. They don't need any push. And it's, it's also the living miracle because um, if we were to go back in time, we can't verify the miracle of Moses. You know, Moses speaking the sea, Jesus, you know, bringing back to the dead. Because these are time bags. And by the way, these miracles were not were not for us. These, these miracles. No, sorry, one, like one second, brother, sorry. These miracles were only to convince their people. It's not for us. You understand? But the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, since he's the final prophet that sent for everyone, he was given the greatest miracle that you can test by. So we say the Quran is the greatest miracle. Even though he performed many other miracles, for example, you know, water flowing from his fingers, he was able to communicate animals, right? Uh, or the tree was communicated. But these miracles, you can't go back 1,400 years ago to verify. You have the Quran with you, which is the living miracle. You test it yourself. You know, nobody's produced a book like it. Yeah? Um, for example, the Quran, you know, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he challenges to the readers in chapter 4 verse 82 Quran that do they not reflect upon the Quran with care had we found anyone besides Allah they will find there many contradictions because you know that if this book is from God there should be no contradiction because God is perfect but you will not find a single contradiction in the Quran so what I advise you and also the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him his character was he was known as Sadiq al Amin, the honest and trustworthy. Even the enemies of the Prophet, they admitted he's not known to be a liar. He's not known to be a poet. He's not he's not known to be a magician. But the reason why they reject him is not because of him. They just it just goes against their their belief. That's it. But they knew it's true. Some of them they accepted, some of them not. So what we advise you, we just invite you to Islam because Islam is Islam is the only religion that aligns with your heart and your mind so if that makes sense to you what i advise you i advise you to read the quran for yourself and then you make a decision hmm? yeah yeah it's a translation um, i can give you a better translation if you want because you know um just to clarify when we give out copies of the quran oh thank you very much yeah there you go if you have when we give you the, the Quran, we give you the English translation. But we always say that they will. Sorry. Uh, Quran, can we get you two copies of the Quran? Do you want one more copy? Oh, it's fine. No problem. So, what, what we say is whenever you read the Quran, this is the English translation. And every translation, there's always going to be human mistakes. Yeah? So, but however, in terms of the theological understanding, the basics, you will find it in the translation. But we say this is not the Quran, this is just a attempted meaning of the Quran. But the original uh, uh, language is in, the, in the Quran is Arabic. Yeah, that's it. So what advice should you do? You know, give it a chance. Read the Quran. If the message of Islam makes sense to you, that there's nothing worth it to be worshipped except Allah, who is the creator, the sustainer, and Prophet Muhammad is the last and final message of Allah, then I invite you to Islam. I mean, intellectually, it is interesting to read about this person, yeah. this human being, who lived thousands of years back, whose grave is thousands of miles away, he's not even alive, and yet, you see his impact, there will be over a billion people who are following him, and I'm, I'm pretty much sure that uh, most people would argue that Islam as a religion, although it's behind Christianity as a second most followed religion on earth, but in terms of followers, oh, the next no, followers to the, in terms of their day-to-day -day life, yeah. we see that Islam people who are Muslim, they they practice more Islam yeah. than most Christians do. Yeah, and just just to make and it short, just just to make it short, Islam is the, uh, there's a lot of misconception, and I, I'll make that point before I let you go. Because I do unless you have any more questions, but it's a pleasure speaking to you. Um, 
what is there's a lot of misconceptions that Islam was founded 49 years ago and that Prophet Muhammad peace was the founder of Islam. We don't believe in that. We believe that Islam was there since the time of Adam. Because Islam means submission. That's what it means. Islam means you submit your will to one God alone. And this was the religion of all the prophets and messengers. Yeah? So Judaism cannot be a religion because Judaism is named after a tribe. It's, it's called the tribe of Judah. Jesus is not a Christian because he never called himself Christian. He never preached a religion from Christianity. So what we say is all the prophets and messengers, they came with one message, one religion. That one message is Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, don't associate partners, one way of life, Islam, submitting your will to one God. Does that make sense? Yeah? I mean, if you come from an atheistic perspective, uh, uh, there were one in my life when uh, my iman or my faith level went down, I know the question in my face. But what, what brought me back again is that, like, you know, uh, your wife was speaking. Yeah, I know. Uh, when Christianity, didn't make if I'm not saying it wrong, yeah, yeah. it's not like it was wasting your time. So if you ask about, okay, why, why, why should I think about religion? Why should I think about praising a God? What does it mean? Does it does the God actually exist? Let's go to the very first principle. No, I've already explained. I've already explained right from the beginning. No, no, because I want to respect the time because they've, they've given yeah, us the ears. You know, we don't want to give them all, all the information. I, I know you have no intention, Barakul Afiq, but this is Islam is not complicated. It's very simple. Yeah, and I, I just advise you to read the Quran. You know, the message of Islam it aligns with your heart and your mind. It's not like Christianity, Hinduism, because nothing, all of your religion except Islam, you will never agree with your heart. You will never agree with your natural disposition. But when I explained to you the belief in Allah, it did resonate your heart. Because we believe that every person was born as a Muslim. Every person was born with the natural inclination to submit the Creator. However, the parents make them a Jew or Christian pie worshiper. So that's the reason why when a person accepts Islam, we don't call them a convert. We call you a revert because you're coming to your original state. That's what we call you to. So if that makes sense to you, I invite you to Islam. Otherwise, you know, go and research yourself. And the pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you.